Okay. Uh, on the next screen, I think we have our reading from Titus today. But when God our Saviour revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out his Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the responsibilities of parents is that we teach our children the habit of gratitude and of saying thank you when they receive a gift. Partly we're teaching them just simply the, the appropriate response, but underlying that is also helping them to recognise the relationship that every gift expresses, as well as the goodness of the gift and the undeserved nature of the gift. Now, when we teach our children that, we're teaching them something that actually comes naturally, or at least most of the time it ought to come naturally. The other day, I saw a child, you could probably guess who, receive a gift. And her reaction, immediate upon receiving it, was to throw her arms around the person who'd given it to her and say, oh, thank you so much. The thank you was moved and brought out of her simply by the giving of the gift. It didn't need me behind her going, now you remember to say thank you now because she really understood what the gift was all about. She understood this incredibly natural thing to say thank you, when you understand that it's valuable, when you understand that it didn't need to be given, when you understand that it's an expression of love, it's kind of natural to say thank you. But notice the dynamic. If it's really a gift, then it's not something that you have to earn. If you did something for it, then it's not a gift, it's a deal, or it's wages, or it's quid pro quo. A gift by its very nature is not something that you have a right to, and it's not something that costs you. The gift is free. Which is why, of course, we're always suspicious of the advertisements that tell us that they give us a free gift, but we always know that there's something they want in return. So what is gratitude then? Is gratitude in some way a way that we pay for the gift? You get something good and you pay for it by saying thank you? Of course not. Saying thank you is never a payment for the gift. Saying thank you is the recognition of the gift. Saying thank you is the appreciation of the gift and the person who gave it. When we fully understand the relationship, the goodness of the gift, the undeserved nature of it, we are moved to say thank you. And this is what Titus underlines for us tonight. The gift that God gave, gives us in his son Jesus in his birth, in his death, in his resurrection, is grounded in the relationship that God has with us. It, Titus says that through this, God has revealed his kindness and love. The gift is valuable. We're told that this is the washing away of sin. This is new life through the Holy Spirit. It's being right in the sight of God, and it's the confidence that we will now inherit eternal life. And the gift is free. The gift is blessedly free. It's not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy, and because of his grace he gave to us. It is truly gift. Now that kind of contrasts with the legend of Santa, doesn't it? Or at least what we've made of Santa. Santa, in our storytelling at least, is much more a quid pro quo. If you're good all year, then you get presents at the end of it. One of my favourite cartoon scripts is Calvin and Hobbes, and one of the recurring themes I think every year is Calvin stressing about the fact that he's just not sure that he can be good all the way through to December 25. 
It's the kind of story, isn't it, that Santa gives you gifts if you're good. It's the kind of story that parents tell their kids to motivate a certain kind of behaviour. But it's not really gift-giving, is it? Of course, actually, Christmas works out quite differently in most of our houses. For most of us, uh, our gift-giving is, if not completely pure, at least largely so. Parents enjoy giving good gifts to their children. Children enjoy giving gifts to their parents and seeing their delight as well. For the most part, we don't give our gifts with strings attached. They are indeed an expression of the relationship. Whatever we've made of Santa in the legend, the way we actually enact it, shows that we do know something of what giving is all about. Of course, being human, we sometimes do need to remember to remind each other to say thank you. But for the most part, that also comes naturally. So consider then what it is to worship. Worship, to a large degree, is simply a way of saying thank you. Thank you for God's great, freely given gift. We have to be clear, though, that worship is not a way, in any way at all, is not a way of paying God back for the gift. It doesn't earn the gift of salvation. It's not that we worship beforehand and then God gives us his gift. And it's not that God gives us his gift and then we kind of have to earn it and pay him back for it by worship and saying thank you. It doesn't earn the gift either beforehand or after. What worship does is it recognises the gift. Worship is actually our way of receiving the gift and understanding it. It's an expression of the joy in the gift. It's an expression of joy in the generosity of it. It's an expression of joy in the giver. And that's the kind of worship we're invited to bring to God. It's the spontaneous joy of a child throwing their arms around the giver and saying, thank you so much. It's the absorption of the beloved and the beauty of the lover and the merciful wonder of discovering that you are loved. Worship is just another way of experiencing, of receiving and of taking in the goodness of God. As we express our gratitude to him, we enter into that relationship, into the freeness of the gift, into the goodness of the gift. It's no wonder that the shepherds that night went away praising God they certainly had done nothing to bring about the coming of the Messiah. They had done nothing to deserve even hearing about it. But God had come to them, brought the Messiah, given them the special uh, blessing of being able to see it. And they went and they saw the babe and then they were moved to this spontaneous joy of praise and thanks and worship. <laughs> so I guess they probably woke the whole town of Bethlehem that night with their rejoicing. We haven't featured the wise men tonight. That's kind of a trick. If you want to hear about the wise men, you have to come on January 8th when we celebrate the Festival of Epiphany, which of course is actually the festival of the arrival of the wise men. But even with the wise men, notice too that they don't earn God's goodness by bringing the gifts that they bring. Rather, their gifts and their worship are their spontaneous response to the fact that God has already given his new king. Mary. Mother Mary admitted her own humble estate before God, but God nevertheless favoured her. Mary then spontaneously, we're told at one stage, responds in praise with that song of Mary we used earlier, and at the end of our reading today, that she held all these things worshipfully in her heart after the shepherds had left. And tonight, we are invited to join them again to refresh our sense of how good God is, how much God has done for us in our Saviour. We are invited to come again and recognise the graciousness of the gift that has cost us nothing, the gift that we have done nothing to deserve. We are invited to renew <coughs> our awareness that all of this comes from God's attitude towards us, an attitude of love, an attitude of mercy, an attitude of kindness. And if we can do that, 
then surely we will naturally be moved to worship and gratitude. We will be moved to say thank you. So we're going to sing our next song now. As we go through this song, let the wonder of the first verse hit you again as we consider again the magnitude of what child is this? Let the second verse remind you of the cost that he paid in order to bring this free gift to you. And let the third one then move you to that blessed thankfulness that owns Jesus as King and receives him in your own heart. Let's see. What child is this? Please stand.